In this video, we will study the pathological features of obstructive lung diseases that include emphysema, chronic bronchitis, bronchiectasis, and asthma. First of all, we will start with emphysema. You know that emphysema is the destruction of walls of alveoli. So before we study the pathological features of emphysema in details, we need to know that what a lung acinus is. Basically, a lung acinus comprises of respiratory bronchioles that open into alveolar ducts and at the end of these alveolar ducts there are alveoli. So lung acinus includes respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts and alveoli. Now if the emphysema only involves the respiratory bronchioles, it is called sentry acinar emphysema. It is called sentry because it affects the region of acinus that is close towards the hilum of lungs. Secondly, if the emphysema affects the distal part of acinus comprising of alveolar ducts and alveoli, it will be called as distal acinar emphysema. And at last, if the emphysema affects all regions of acinus, it is called pan acinar emphysema. Now let's come to the gross features. You know that as emphysema is an obstructive lung disease, so this obstruction causes trapment of air inside lungs which makes the lungs voluminous. So on gross specimen of emphysema, you see lungs that are voluminous or increase in size. Now each of these three specific types of emphysema affect specific parts of lung. If emphysema is sentry acinar, it affects upper zone of lungs. If it is pan acinar emphysema, it affects lower part of the lungs. And if it is distal acinar emphysema, it will affect regions of lungs close to pleura. Now the point which most students always confuse is that central acinar emphysema affects upper part and pan acinar emphysema affects the lower part of lung. Hence the trick to remember this is the word CUP, C-U-P. In CUP, C stands for sentry acinar emphysema and UP stands for up which means the upper zones of lungs. So sentry acinar emphysema affects the upper zone of lung and in contrast pan acinar emphysema affects the lower zones of lung and the distal, emphyse distal acinar emphysema affects the distal parts of lung that are close to pleural membrane. Now let's come to the microscopic features of emphysema and the keywords to remember are alveolar destruction and deformed bronchioles. You know that this is the key pathophysiology in emphysema that in emphysema the walls of alveoli are destroyed and due to the destruction of walls of alveoli, the elastic support on bronchioles is lost due to which the bronchioles become deformed. So the keywords for microscopic features are also the same, alveolar destruction and deformed bronchioles. Firstly, this alveolar destruction is manifested on microscope as loss of alveolar septa and resultantly enlarged air spaces. The second keyword is deformed bronchioles. You know that in emphysema, the elastic support to small bronchioles is lost, so they become collapsed. Plus, in emphysema, as it is usually caused by smoking, so you see inflammatory cells and fibrosis in response to smoke particles. So overall on microscopy, you see loss of alveolar septa with enlarged air spaces and you see collapsed bronchioles and you see some inflammation and fibrosis in response to smoke particles. Now let's come to the morphological features of chronic bronchitis. As chronic bronchitis is a disease of both large airways and small airways, so you see morphological changes at both levels. On gross specimen, the large airways that are trachea and bronchi become hyperemic and swollen. Hyperemia means increase in redness that is due to the inflammation. Now the small airways which are bronchioles get filled with mucus secretions that is known as mucosal plugging. And sometimes these secretions are so excessive that they block the lumen of bronchioles. This condition is known as bronchiolitis obliterans bronchiolitis obliterans. So overall on gross specimen of chronic bronchitis, you see hyperemia and swelling in large airways and you see mucosal plugging or bronchiolitis obliterans in small airways. Now let's come to the microscopic features of chronic bronchitis. But before we go to the details, you need to remember one basic principle that will help you to remember the morphological features of chronic bronchitis. And this point is that you know that chronic bronchitis occurs in smokers. So what happens is that in response to the smoke particles, the walls of large airways as well as small airways start producing excessive mucus secretion. The wisdom of producing high amount of mucus is to trap the smoke particles at the level of airways so that they do not enter the lung and cause damage at the level of alveoli. 
So all the morphological features you see in chronic bronchitis are actually the reflection of excessive mucus excessive mucus secreting response to trap the smoke particles. So firstly, in large airways data like trachea and bronchi, you see increase in number of glands in submucosa layer, which increases the thickness of submucosa. Resultantly, the ratio of submucosal thickness to thickness of total wall is increased from a normal value of 0.4. This ratio of submucosal thickness to total thickness of wall is known as Reed's index. So, Reed's index becomes greater than 0.4. Secondly, as the word bronchitis contains itis, so you see inflammatory cells in large airways because itis means inflammation. Now, if you see small airways, they show formation of goblet cells. And the surprising fact to know is that in normal bronchioles, there are no or minimum goblet cells. But in case of chronic bronchitis, the irritants such as smoke induce formation of goblet cells, which we call as goblet cell metaplasia. And these goblet cells secrete mucus, so you see muc mucus plugging in the lumen of bronchioles. And as the word bronchitis contains itis, so definitely there are inflammatory cells and fibrosis. So overall on microscopy you see increased Reed's index due to increase in thickness of submucosa in large airways and you also see inflammatory cells in large airways. In small airways you see goblet cell metaplasia, mucus plugging and inflammation. The next disease in the series is bronchiectasis. So on gross specimen you see dilated airways because the elastic tissue in the walls has been destroyed by the infection. So airways become dilated. And as there is infection, so you see purulent secretions in the lumen. Lastly, as the perfusion of blood is maximum in lower part of lungs, so bacteria tend to gravitate at the bottom. Hence, lower, lo lower lobes of lungs are more affected in bronchiectasis. So overall, the gross features are dilated airways with purulent secretions in lumen and most of the affected airways are those that are present in the lower parts of lung or lower lobes of the lungs. Now for microscopic features, the keywords are Infection destroys bronchial walls and lining epithelium. You know that this is the key pathophysiological event in bronchiectasis. Then infection destroys the bronchial walls and it also destroys the lining epithelium of bronchi. The first keyword is infection and in response to infection you see acute and chronic inflammatory cells that are neutrophils, lymphocytes and macrophages. The second keyword is destroys bronchial walls. So on microscopic picture you see destroyed muscle and elastic tissue of bronchial wall. The third key word is destroy lining epithelium. So you see desquamation and ulcerating epithelium. Lastly, in more chronic cases, the epithelium gets regenerated, but the destroyed muscle and elastic tissue cannot be regenerated. So it gets replaced by fibrous tissue, which is called fibrosis. So overall on microscopy, you see acute and chronic inflammatory cells. You see destroyed muscle and elastic tissue. You see desquamating and ulcerating epithelium. And at last, you see fibrosis in bronchial walls at later stages. The next disease is asthma. And as asthma is also an obstructive lung disease, so you see overinflated lungs due to air trapping. On microscopic picture, you see hypersensitivity response of asthma manifested as three main elements that are mucus secretion, eosinophilic inflammation, and airway remodeling. Mucus secretion, eosinophilic inflammation, and airway remodeling. The first keyword is mucus secretion. So you see mucus plugs in bronchi and bronchioles with shed epithelium. These mucus plugs in asthma are given a special name that is Kirschman spirals. Next, the second element is eosinophilic inflammation. So you see eosinophils in the microscope. And these eosinophils produce a protein called eosinophilic protein galactin 10. Eosinophilic protein galactin 10. These proteins then aggregated, then get segregated into crystal-like structures that are called charcoal-laden crystals. So here, keep in mind the difference between Kirschman spirals and charcoal-laden crystals. Kirschman spirals are the mucus plugs that are present in bronchi and bronchioles, while charcoal-laden crystals are aggregates of crystal-like aggregates of protein called eosinophilic protein galactin 10. The third element is airway remodeling, which means structural changes in the wall of airways. And for you, I have categorized those changes layer by layer. The first layer is mucosa, and the change which occurs at the level of mucosa is the formation of many goblet cells, which we call as goblet cell metaplasia. The second layer is submucosa, where you see that total number of glands is increased. 
The third layer is muscularis, where you see hypertrophy and hyperplasia of bronchial muscles. So overall picture of asthma in microscope is mucus plugs known as Kirschman spirals, eosinophils and charcoal laden crystals, and goblet cell metaplasia, increase in number of glands, and bronchial muscle hypertrophy and hyperplasia. So this concludes our discussion of morphologies of obstructive lung diseases.